This is the last in a series of videos I'm making about Latin, um, and this one is a sample of actual Latin. Um, before we dive in, I want to talk a little bit about the alphabet. Um, it is, for most of us, really quite familiar, especially if you're uh, a native English speaker. This is this is also our alphabet. Um, so A, B, C, D, E, F, or in Latin, A, B, K, D, A, F. Now, in some Latin texts, what you may notice is that some of the vowels have lines over them, and we call those lines macrons, and it distinguishes between long and short vowels. So, like, here we have E without the macron, E, E, and that's with the macron, E, E, so it's longer. Um, in some Latin texts, you'll see the letter I uses both a consonant and a vowel, and in some you'll see J as the consonant instead of I. Yeah. Another one is U and V, and some of them you will see U and V distinguished, and other people say that U and V are the same letter, and that's why you might go to a museum and see on it carved letters M, V, S, E, V, M. Well, it's because capital U, traditionally when carved, is a V, so really those are U's. That's a museum and not a museum. Um... But now on to the Latin. The text in front of us is the opening to Julius Caesar's De, De Bello Gallico. Um, and it's fairly famous, you know, Gallia est omnis divisa in partes tres. Uh, Gaul is divided into three parts. Um, so let's go ahead and give this a look through and talk about some of the things that make Latin Latin. Um, you may hear me try to nasalize uh, the final end, the final M's on some of these words. And according to our best scholarship, that is what Latin sounded like. So let's see if I can do this and approach something like what we think Latin sounded like 2,000 years ago. Gallia est omnis divisa in partes tres. Quarum una incolunt belgae, alian aquitani, tertian, qui ipsorum lingua celtae nostra galli appellantur. He omnes lingua institutis legibus inter se differunt, gallos ab aquitanis garunda flumen, a belgis matrona et sequana dividit. Horum omnium fortissimi sunt belgae, Propteria quod a culto atque humanitate provinciae longissime absunt. Minimeque ad eos mercatore saipe commeant atque, ea quae effiminandos animos pertinent important, proximique sunt Germanis, qui trans reno incolunt, quibus con contenentor belmon gerunt. Okay, so let's go back to the top and talk about some of the features we see here. So, Gallia est omnis divisa in partes tres. Um, you're not going to see it right here, but I'll point it out as we go on. Um, Latin has case endings in partes tres, so in two, three parts. Um, quarum una incolunt belgae. Um, and what we see here is una one, okay, well, let's start at the beginning. Gallia est omnis divisa. Gaul is all divided in partes tres, in three, well, in parts three. So all of Gaul is divided into three parts. They say Gaul, all, and notice how it's on either side of the verb est. It's literally divided by the verb Gaul, all, divisa, um, divided. So Gaul is divided, and that's a nice trick you can do with Latin, because they have a flexible word order. So, Gallia omnis, so they say Gaul all, or all Gaul, whereas we say all of Gaul. Divisa in partes tres, divided into three parts. Quarum, of which, referring back to the parts, unam incolunt belgae, unam, one, referring to parts, incolunt, they inhabit Belgae, the Belgians. So we have direct object, the verb, and then the subject, which is running completely backwards to how we do it in English. And in fact, you couldn't say that. You'd say one inhabit 
the Belgians. Well, it doesn't sound very good in English, so one inhabits the Belgians, and that makes no sense. Whereas in Latin, it makes perfectly good sense, because we have unam indicating accusative case, and t, the verb, ai, for belgai, indicating the subject. Alian aquitani. And this is the other, the Aquitanian. So here, Caesar says, one in one inhabit the Belgians. And here, because we're just going to say Aliam Aquitani, and you're just supposed to figure that he's referring that the Aquitanians live in the second part. And he doesn't need to re repeat the verb in Colunt. He can just jump right over it and squeeze that down and compact it down. Tertiam. Qui ipsorum lingua Celtae nostra Galli appellantur. And here he does it again. The third, who of their own language, and this is telling you how it's done, you can't see it, but that A should have a macron over it, but I didn't use any macrons. Celtae. So, who by their own language, Celts. By their own language, Celts what? Uh, nostra, by ours. By our what? Well, by our language, in other words, Latin. Galli appellantur. So they call themselves Celts. We, the Romans, call them Galli. He omnes lingua institutis legibus inter se differunt. These, the peoples mentioned in the previous sentence, omnes, these all, by language, institutions, laws, among themselves differ. And this sentence has a pretty standard default word order for Latin. You've got the subject first, you've got stuff in between, in this case um, ablative of means is what we call it in the Latin world. We have a prepositional phrase, and then finally the verb. And that's pretty vanilla for Latin. It goes subject, then the other stuff, and then finally the verb. Gallos ab aquitanis, the Gauls, someone's doing something to them, but we don't know what. Ab aquitanis, from the Aquitanians, Garum na Flumen, the Garonne River, from the Belgians, we still don't know what, from the Belgians, a Belgis matrona et sequana, the Marne and the Seine, divide it, divides, okay. So, the Garonne divides the Gauls from the Aquitanians, and the Marne and the Seine from the Belgians. Well, it divides the Gauls from the Belgians. And here's the case marking that I'm talking about. So, Galli here, they're the subject. Gallos there, they are the direct object. So, Latin uses this case marking to indicate who's doing what in the sentence. And as a result, you can really scramble the word orders. So, between the telescoping and getting rid of things that you've already said, so unam incolunt belgai, aliam incolunt aquitani, so you get rid of the incolunt so you don't repeat yourself. So between that cutting out of repeated information and the ability to scramble words in a direct object verb subject manner, you know, so that you can scramble the words however you like them, these two things make Latin well, they give Latin a bad reputation for being hard because the word order is always changing. There are all sorts of syntactical things and morphological things that you have to keep an eye on. And then just to keep you really on your toes, they don't repeat things they don't need to. They make you, the reader, do a lot of the heavy lifting for them. Um, and this is kind of what Latin is like.